Hi, this is Dr. Ben Finio with Science Buddies, and in this video, I will go over the procedure for our electrolyte challenge project, which allows you to measure the conductivity of a liquid like water, juice, or a sports drink. The conductivity of the liquid is proportional to its electrolyte content. You can read more about the scientific background for this project in the written instructions, which are linked in the description of this video. To do this project, you will need to use a multimeter. I'll show you how to use the specific features of the multimeter that you need for this project in this video, but if you would like a more general introduction to a multimeter, check out our multimeter tutorial, again, linked in the description of this video. To start the project, you will need to make your conductance sensor. Your electrolyte challenge kit comes with a small spool of uninsulated copper wire. To make the sensor, you cut a short piece of straw, cut two pieces of the wire, and then wrap each piece around each end of the straw. It is important to make sure these loose pieces of wire do not touch each other when you are doing the experiment, or that will create a short circuit and blow the fuse in your multimeter. We'll talk more about that later. Next, it is time to set up your circuit. Here are all the parts you will need. The multimeter, the two multimeter probes, the 9-volt battery, the 9-volt battery snap connector, the conductance sensor that you just made, and the three alligator clips from your kit. Note that the colors of these clips may vary, that is okay. First, let's connect the probes to the multimeter. You're going to take the black probe and plug it into the port labeled COM, and the red probe and plug it into the port labeled V, Omega, that's the capital Greek letter Omega, which stands for ohms, the unit to measure resistance, which we are not using in this project, and MA, which stands for milliamps, the unit of current that we will be measuring in this project. Next, take your 9-volt battery and put on the snap connector. Note that the terminals are different sizes, so this connector will only fit on the battery one way. And then you are going to take one of your alligator clips and use it to connect the red or positive wire from the battery to the red or positive lead from your multimeter. Note that I have used twist ties to bundle up the alligator clip cable here to make things a little less messy. That is optional, but you can do that if you find it helps you make things neater. You should have two remaining loose ends in your circuit, the black multimeter probe and the black wire from the battery. You're going to use your two remaining alligator clips to connect those wires to your conductivity sensor. So I'm going to connect one of them to the multimeter probe and then to one wire of the sensor and the other one to the battery wire and to the other wire of the sensor. Now, this is where it becomes very important not to let any of the loose pieces of metal in the circuit touch each other because this can create a short circuit and blow the fuse in your multimeter. So again, when handling things, be very careful not to let the wires on the conductivity sensor or the exposed metal tips of the alligator clips touch each other. That can create a short circuit. If you do blow the fuse, it can be replaced. It is not a huge deal. We have a separate video linked in the description of this one showing you how to replace a blown fuse but it's easier if you just avoid doing that in the first place. Once you have the circuit set up, you will want to change the dial on the multimeter to the 200 milliamp range. This means it will measure currents up to 200 milliamps and switch the multimeter on. Now the current should read zero if the conductivity sensor has not been placed in any liquid yet. However, if I take my sensor and place it in the liquid, current will flow through the circuit from the battery through the multimeter to one end of the conductivity sensor, through the liquid, and then back into the other end of the battery. So I will have a complete circuit, and the multimeter is set up to measure the current flowing through that circuit, which again will be proportional to the amount of electrolytes in the liquid. So you can see that when I have the conductivity sensor in air here, there is nearly infinite resistance between the two ends of this sensor, so there is no current flowing. But when I immerse it in a liquid, my multimeter reading, change, multimeter reading changes, and now I am now measuring about 18 milliamps of current flowing through the circuit. Now, there are a few things to consider here when taking your readings. Note that the amount of current flowing is also going to be proportional to the amount of wires submerged in the liquid. The more surface area there is, the easier it is for current to flow. So be careful with each trial you do. You will want to make sure you submerge your conductivity sensor the same amount. You can see if I start to put this down in there farther, so more of the wire is submerged, my reading actually goes up significantly. You will also want to take your readings fairly quickly. If you leave the wire submerged for too long, you might start getting bubble formation or some oxidation on one of the wires, which can also affect your reading. So take your readings very quickly and try to get through all your trials with the same sensor. 
If you start to notice too much oxidation or discoloration on your wires, you can make a new sensor and start over since you have plenty of extra wire in your kit. But again, try to make the readings quickly before that starts to take effect. In between trials with different liquids, you will also want to completely rinse off your sensor with distilled water and then dry it so you don't have any residual contamination from different liquids between trials. Speaking of distilled water, when measuring distilled water as a control, you will want to change your multimeter's dial down to the 2000 or 200 microamp range because distilled water is not very conductive. It does not allow as much current to flow as juices or sports drinks. However, if you see that I turn down to that range while I am measuring a sports drink, my multimeter screen just reads 1. That means the current has exceeded the current range. So that doesn't mean I'm measuring 1 milliamp or 1 microamp. This 1 with a bunch of spaces after it means you are currently over the range that the dial is set to, so you have to move up to one of the higher ranges to get a proper current reading. So again, for distilled water, you will want to move down to one of the microamp ranges, but for juices and sports drinks, you will want to use the milliamp range. If your multimeter is reading zero all the time, there are two possibilities. One is that you have an open circuit and something is disconnected. For example, if I disconnect this alligator clip, the circuit is broken, no current can flow, and you see that my multimeter will read zero. The other possibility is that you have accidentally blown the fuse in your multimeter. So even if everything is connected, you double check all of the alligator clips and make sure none of them are loose, and your multimeter is still reading zero, it is likely that you accidentally bumped, for example, the two conductivity sensor wires together or two of the other alligator clips and ends, causing a short circuit, blowing the fuse in your multimeter, which will then cause it to read zero. So if you have that problem, again, we have a separate video linked in the description of this one that will show you how to replace the fuse. We hope you found this video helpful. This is one of our most popular projects at Science Buddies. If you still have a question, you can visit our Ask an Expert forums where K-12 students can ask questions and get help with their hands-on science projects. For written instructions for this and thousands of other fun hands-on science and engineering projects, visit us online at www.sciencebuddies.org.